in your book, the Think Big, Start Small, Move Fast, you told a part about the building of Tanjung Rasul. And I actually visited there, and it's actually very beautiful. And you'll see that uh, during the building of uh, Tanjung Rasul, uh, for the success of the building, you should have world class location, world class management, world class master plan, and also perfect timing. And I would like to ask, what do you mean by this perfect timing? Thank you. Thank you. Let me just answer this one. Eh? So, perfect timing means that God already gave his consent. So there's a perfect timing. A project will not be successful if you don't have this uh, three principle on timing, which means God gives consent, the political situation support, uh, and the world is also support. So the timing is perfect to, uh, to start this project. So that is timing. But apart from timing, also you have to consider the the, uh, the location itself, the earth, is the earth ready? Is the location good? For example, in that place now, toll road has been built. So that means the earth is more ready than 30 years ago. So this uh, is, uh, the earth is welcoming. So number one is the timing, God gives his consent. Number two, the earth is ready. Number three is the human. The human are in harmony. If the people in that place are not ready, then it's difficult for us to start. When I visited down so first time in 1991, with the mindset that the people there are poor, so we need to help to develop that area. That is what the government uh, actually said that please, Jababeka, go to Tanjung Lesung, 180 kilometers from Jakarta, help us to develop that area into a world class resort. So I went there and uh, saw a couple with 11 children running around under the coconut trees. So in my mind, I said, this man is poor. Who come he has got 11 children? I have only three children. How come he has got 11? So I asked him, but why you have 11 children? He said, yes, because I have thousands of coconut trees here and one coconut tree can feed one child. So the people is not that people are not ready, right? Because that is the mindset. Then I go to see a fisherman with a lot of fish on the boat and ask, can I buy? I put a lot of I'm sure a lot of money. He said, no, no, this is not for sales. Are you hungry? Please take any amount you want. So who is helping who? I thought. So that place is not ready. But also, the government and I understand, if we don't do anything, that place will remain poor in our eyes for a long, long time. And then when the number of children become much bigger in that area, there will be a big problem. And it will be too late to help. So that's why, although it was not properly, timing-wise was not right, we did it. God actually always gave his consent, <laughs> but the timing was possibly not perfect when we started. We started the hotel in 1996, 97, there was big devaluation, monetary crisis, Suharto collapse, yeah. government change. So timing was, was not right. Good morning, Mr. Damono. My name is Joseph and I'm majoring in ID. My question is regarding financial freedom you mentioned before. According to our Ministry of Finance, new genera generations are going to have a hard time in even buying a house. Do you have any suggestions for us to become financially free in our hard situation? Thank you. Well, the issue one in business is about trading, right? 
right? How to make money? That's okay, basically your question, right? If you buy low and sell high, you make profit, right? If you buy low, you buy cheap. Then you have a long-term credit. You can pay late. And then if you sell, you sell high. And you can get cash, collect a lead. Are you going to be rich or not? So that just one, just put it on your in the wall of your room. Buy low, sell high. Collect a lead and pay it. That's the recipe to be rich. But once you know it, can you do it? Can you practice? So the next thing is your ability to see which product you can buy low and pay late. You tell me now, which product you can pay low and pay, uh, can buy low and pay late? Yeah? You don't know? So product which can be bought at a low price is product which is actually difficult to sell. For many years, the company or the people have got this product and cannot sell. You go around in Jababita here, you see many houses, some are for sales. For a long time, they cannot sell. So they need help. They want to sell at a low price, but they do not want to put the price there because then you have no time to bargain, right? So that's why they just put for sales. So you have to see them. Okay, I want to buy. What price? And how long can I pay? How long have you had this uh, house or shop houses to be sold? Oh, it's been four or five years. So that means he's desperate. So it's your chance to bargain. Okay, then give me one year credit. I pay you within one year. But let's make agreement first. How much joint payment you want? He said, well, give me 10%. You said, no, no, no. I give you 1%. So you give 1% down payment. Where the money come from? You bring your friends here. You collect a lot of money here, 1%. Join way together. You buy a shop house there with 1% down payment, one year payment. And then you start marketing. How to sell high? How to sell high? And cash. So you have to create, say you open a restaurant. How can you make sure that the restaurant is successful? You bring again your friends. You choose which one of you can cook. So some say, oh, I can cook, I can cook. Okay. Then you find something which is here not available. Maybe what? Padang food? Maybe uh, Papua food? Yeah. You have many friends here from many provinces. So you can open something which is not available yet. And then empty. So how can you make it crowded? You ask your friend to eat there, right? And dress nicely, not using uniform. I guess they know that you are all Christian University students. So you dress with different dresses and nicely. And queue outside also, you make your friends like 20 of them queue waiting. What perception is coming? How do people see? If you go around, you want to eat in the restaurant, you see the restaurant empty, are you going to go in? No. You see restaurant is full, you go there, right? KFC, food, you go to KFC. Especially if KFC also make music. Yeah. The music make you feeling hungry. And then also smell. Smell so good. So you want to come in. So this is all the art of selling, art of culture. Uh, uh, art and culture, you have to understand. The art of dressing up, the art of packaging. How key to culture that this is something 
very nice, something new, something different, that you have to create. The presidency must understand the art of creating something out of nothing. You create something out of nothing, you have no money, but you can create something there. Buy, buy, buy low, sell high, collect early and pay late. And then you practice how to make that restaurant successful. You have so many friends, many lecturers. The lecturers, I think, will participate with you, <laughs> pretending to be the customers. If you pay, fine, right? even better. right? Then you cook and eat together, and you make promotion. Yeah? Put in the med sauce, photographs. Yeah. So everybody knows about this. And then people from Jakarta will come to Jakarta to try your food because it's something special. See, if you sell Medan foods, then suddenly Medan people, Batak people from Jakarta will come to Jakarta because it's very difficult to find, for example, dog meat. I think some of the Batak people eat dog, right? Where to buy uh, dog meat? Very difficult to find. Suddenly in Jakarta there is dog meat. Then people from Jakarta, Bandung will come to eat that one. So that is one example to differentiate your product. Other people do not have, you have. So you buy low, sell high, collect a lead, pay late, and you promote very well. Are you going to be rich or not? Do you have the courage to do so? If you don't have the courage, together. You see a beautiful girl, you don't have the courage to approach her, you bring your friends. The race is your friends will get the girl, you won't get it. You can. But at least you have a, a practice. Next time alone you can do because oh, last time I bring my friends, uh, cohorting that girl, but my friends take her, right? So next time I go alone. <laughs> but you have the confidence. Huh? So in the university, basically, you have to learn about to become confident. And you are confident if you have competency. So the competency must be trained. You have competency now to bargain. You have competency to look which product is in oversupply. From oversupply, you change to no supply, high demand. Because you sell food which is in high demand, but no supply. Not only in Jakarta. So that is something which you have to learn. Your competency will be you able to see opportunities. There is competency to see opportunity. Then when you are competent, you become confident. When you are confident, you become what? You become curious. You want to know more. When you are curious, then you have become creative. So force is not additional one. Competency, confidence, curiosity, and creativity. There's Mr. Lecturer, Sifu Lecturers. <laughs> yeah. That is the way to teach our students to be successful. First, give them competency, then they will become confident. When they are confident, they will become curious. Without telling, teaching them, they will buy books, uh, read books, go to the libraries. Library will be full because they want to know more and more about knowledge, about what other people's success is. Then they will be creative. How to imitate, how to improve, and how to innovate. Uh, I want to ask when you said we have to improve ourselves. But why should I go to the platform? Being an expert, uh, being an expert in a blog, or I must buy many things and be a multi -talent. Thank you. Okay, there is a story that a general general was in the shooting ground. And he, this is an old story, no gun yet at that man. So the general used an arrow to the target. So he is very, very good. All the time it goes into the, uh, in the center point. So everybody who was who were watching, they were clapping with him. The general was so happy, proud, and becomes yeah, it's a bit of arrogant. They become arrogant. And then there was a uh, 
Pak yang orang jual jualan itu Pak vendor ya is a vendor vendor uh, selling um, coconut uh, water what you I don't know what is the word in English but you know when you have like, uh, in the in the countryside you have coconut trees and then you take the water out and sell it as a lekian in, in Jawa we say lekian I don't know in, in Sunda Sunda is different I don't know what is in Sulawesi yeah? but I think it's all available in Indonesia it's so sweet it's called lekian so we saw this uh, we saw this uh, general and he said yeah, um, yes not difficult so general was angry it's not difficult yes the expert in one area is the question right so the this man said well but miss but general how many times you practice a day or oh, i shoot 1000 arrows every day for the last 10 years no wonder he said i can do the same so he take the lakan yeah this coconut water with 10 cups and of course says the the worry got the uh container yeah it has got a long uh what they call tube so he put this one lock from high and he can put in 10 cups without any drop of water he said by general can you do it of course he cannot because he also practices every day so the answer to your question is practice makes perfect you want to master in one skill you do it every day you want to be a good golfer here you hit 1000 balls a day for three months i'm sure we'll be a very good hitter you want to be a, a very great champion in uh, swimming you swim every day here in the morning five o'clock when nobody was there for three thousand meters every day then you join competition many competition then you will be also expert good morning mr damono my name is karen i major in industrial engineering and my question is on your book think big start small and move fast you've mentioned that expanding your network is one of the most important key takeaways what are your tips in building and maintaining networks with people thank you thank you so the question is how to maintain and build network right so if you sit in the in the bedroom all the time you don't mingle with your friends you do your lecturings online all the time how did how you do you build your network and maintain the network so this is why it's important to come to presidency and listening offline. This is the kind of networking. You come to university, you have large network. In the future, now one of your uh, friends here may become president, may become minister of somewhere, and maybe one of your girls here married to uh, one Chinese from China who became president of China, and the girl came from Papua. So the Papua girl is the wife of the president of China. And then what happened? You know, who controlled China? It's the wife, right? <laughs> so this is the idea also why we, have, we want to have many foreign students so that Indonesia can influence the world. Not only America influence the world because many Indonesians <coughs> go to America, don't come back, marry to American. <coughs> So who influence who? That's why we need to do the same here. So coming to university is networking. But if you also only sit in the apartment, do not mingle, also a problem. So you bring your friends, go to Hollywood Junction, go to Living Plaza, go to Botanic Gardens, go every morning walk for how many kilometers? There are 600 kilometers road here in, in Chikarang. Yeah. It takes you maybe how many months to go through all the road. So you work together. Also invite the lecturers. And then invite factory people. You 
build clubs, walking clubs, singing club, dancing club, whatever clubs. The more clubs you join, the more network you have. Then put them in the WhatsApp group. Then you be active in the WhatsApp group. That is how to maintain them. You are not active, you keep silence. People don't know you, right? If you are active, you maintain. Of course, you don't have to be active in your WhatsApp, all your WhatsApp group. You focus on which area you want to target. So that is how to build a network and maintain a network. Join as many clubs as possible. Create as many clubs as possible. You can create your own club. If you create your own club, you are the boss. If you join other club, there are already boss there. Okay? Yeah. With the rise of uh, social platforms and social media, um, a lot of people have become very successful without knowing all the right people. So my question, my question is, is connection still very important? Thank you. Yes. Okay. So, of course, connection is very important. The problem is you want to connect to, to President Joko Widodo. How do you connect to President Joko Widodo? You want to know Donald Trump. How do you want to connect to Donald Trump? Then you want to connect with a farmer in Tibet. Which one is easier? To President Jokowi, to President Donald Trump, or to the farmer in Tibet? How many steps you have to take to get in touch with them? Actually, it's easier to present Jokowi or Donald Trump than the farmer in Tibet. You want to connect to the president, you talk to Professor Joko, Professor Budi Subanji. He was the governor of Emelhanas under President Joko Widodo. So the, his connection is only one step. Go to Pak Budi, Pak Budi will connect to President. The problem is, what subject you want to talk to President Joko Widodo to make sure that he will, he will want to see you or listen to you? If it's something beneficial to him, then he will listen to you. Say, if you say, Pak, I have got very good solution how to build IKN. Then possibly, yeah, yeah please come. <laughs> because that is now his concern. But I have an idea how we can reach $7 trillion GDP in 2045. The president will say, okay, but who is the one who connect you to president? Must be somebody with credibility who clips and can trust. So yes, connection is important, but uh, how to get it, how to get you connected, you must have a strategy. But to meet the farmer in Tibet is much more difficult. <laughs> Maybe you need seven steps to go there. You have to possibly uh, find first, is there any embassy of Tibet here? There is no embassy of Tibet. So who is closest to Tibet? Maybe India. So you go to the embassy of India, but to meet the, the Indian ambassadors, you need somebody to connect. Maybe Professor Kairi, yeah, he can connect because he gave a lot of scholarships. Yeah. The one Indian ambassador, Indian ambassador then will contact to uh, his uh, colleagues in India, then connect to Tibet, and then connect to the uh, uh, governor, Governor to Bupati, Bupati to Camat, Lura, then find the farmer. But it's a long journey. But it's possible. Seven step maximum. So I want to ask uh, you, sir, uh, how you can see this Java Beka into something that is possible when you build this Java Beka? Not to mention, we have to deal with people who may uh, not believe in us. And how you can make people believe that the vision and mission that you have created is now a reality? Thank you, sir. Not simple. Eh? The answer is simple, but actually the journey is not simple. At that time, I thought, if I want to build something like Singapore, then I need a lot of uh, friends to support. 
I need to have a big dream. If I have a small dream, nobody wants to join me. But if I say to them, I want to build Chikarang with world-class infrastructure so that it can become like Singapore. So the big tycoons in Jakarta, they have not done it. And they also have the same feeling. Yes, Indonesia need to have a place like Singapore, which we can offer to investors, overseas of investors, to do business in Indonesia, like in Singapore, which guarantees certainty of job, certainty of law, security, and conveniences. That is what Singapore is selling. Certainty of law, security, and conveniences. If you've been to Singapore, you know, to go to Sing in Singapore, you feel safe. You can wear your diamond, uh, work at night, no problem. Transportation, very easy. You can use MRT, you can use the buses, uh, very easy and also reasonably cheap. Also very clean. So this is the conveniences of Singapore. You want to send your children to school, there are many good schools. Hospital, many good hospitals. Security is good. You come to uh, Changi Airport, you don't see any police. And uh, within a short time, taxi is there, transported to your hotel. So it's all very convenient, very clean, very secure, and there is, for investors, certainty of law. In Indonesia, Factories from Japan, from Korea coming here to buy land is difficult. They have to buy from farmers and uh, maybe some have got certificate, maybe some not. Maybe there is dispute. The Ahli Waris, they are all quarreling. So it's difficult for investors to come to Indonesia to invest. These all the big businessmen, government, they understand. They understood the problem. So how can we make it simple for investors to come? So we agreed jointly, we will build uh, Jababeka Industrial Estate. But I had to tell them, tell a story, tell my dream that it we will be like Singapore, building Chikarang like Singapore. So everybody joined. And then it has to be cheap. They don't have to spend much money. Then we sell to government the idea. So government gave us very good regulation. Then we do promotion. We promote, we brought in ministers to open the groundbreaking, big advertisement in Kompas newspaper. So that make it happen, but it's a long journey. The answer is simple. In five minutes, I can explain how to build Jababeka. But to build Jabeka takes 33 years until today. Okay, so again, just coming back to think big, start small, and move fast. I'm Pening Sukma Kinasi from Business Administration. And I would like to ask, as you said, that working in a field is very important. And what if we have no previous experiences and also we do not know the basic knowledge and bravery to start? Can you give us um, ad some advice? Thank you. Copy. In the class, you don't understand. Union Tech from your uh, uh, friend who is very good. If you are if you are caught, it's okay. But now you understand, right? So Union Tech imitate is the way to uh, go to the field. Sometimes because we come from Bristol University, we feel we know everything. But really, we can learn from the satpam, the farmer, how to do business in their field. So do not be shy in asking questions. Teachers are everywhere, on the street, in the field, in the farm, everywhere. But if we are shy of asking questions, then we will not learn very much. 
So please ask questions. Don't be shy. If you are shy, you bring your friends together, you ask questions. That is the way to learn. Imitate. Observe. And repeat. Several times, then you become expert.